What about your job? Would shock the everyday customer if they knew about it. Serious. A few years back I worked for McKesson as part of the H1N1 vaccine project. As you'll recall, there was much made of the fact that there was a vaccine shortage. In reality, we had a warehouse full of it. We weren't getting anywhere near the amount of orders that the government had anticipated. Everything in the news was simply not true. I manage a soft serve frozen yogurt shop. The number of times I've caught kids, and sometimes adults, sticking their nasty A fingers in the toppings and or licking the spoons and tongs is downright ridiculous. It's not that they are not immediately cleaned out and sanitized they are, but I'm one person working a pretty big store with a lot of other things going on. The number of times I do catch them makes me afraid of how many times I didn't. TL. Doctor, don't eat the toppings. I work in a potato plant and there are several things that would piss people off. We send out product that we know is bad only to get it back and replace the top two layers on a pallet with fresh product. We get product returned it is then sorted and repackaged, then sent right back. Mysterious fine black dust comes from the vents and accumulates in the storage area. I can't think of any more right now, but it's pretty gross. How many times the wrong house is chosen during an eviction? For every story you hear in the news, there are at least 10 that settle out of court. I seriously don't understand how a bank can screw that up. I'm part of a regression testing team for software. The amount of time I spend browsing Reddit, while my automated test cases execute is staggering. I work from home. I often wonder what people would think if they knew the person they were speaking to was drunk and naked. When I was a pizza delivery driver, the number of people strangely comfortable with opening their own door naked would probably surprise most people. I have done door-to-door -door work for various reasons and it sucks balls, but point hot housewives and towels was always a perk. Using a throwaway I've posted this before on my other account, but deleted my comments. I worked for a large clothing retailer that took stuff off of Etsy, copied it, and resold it to the masses. I can promise you that almost every single clothing company does this so Etsy sellers, beware. If you think you see something similar to your product in a retail store, someone probably bought your product from you and knocked it off in a factory. Urban Outfitters Air traffic controller at a very busy airport in a very large city. If you would amazed slash terrified, if you knew how close airplanes come in and around busy airports, here is your example. You are in plane A on a 5 mile final, 5 miles from edge of the start of the runway coming straight in, plane B that is in front of you just landed, as plane B is rolling out, slowing down, plane C lines up at the edge of the runway waiting for plane B, to exit the runway, your plane, plane A, is now 2 to 3 miles from the edge of the runway with plane C sitting on the same runway filled with over 100 people, plane B exits the runway, and plane C barrels down the runway, Plane C rotates and gets airborne right as your plane crosses the edge of the runway. Rinse. Repeat over and over. It's like a well-oiled machine. I schedule for a group of surgeons. One of which is a complete hack. Uses outdated methods of treatment and most of the time. Has little to no idea of what they are doing in the. Or. So they have to consult the other surgeons in our group. But they have great bedside manner. A lot. If not all. Of their patients mistake. That for being a great surgeon. Worked at Jim Borton's in Canada. Customer shat on the floor next to the toilet. Had to be intentional. It wasn't even close to the toilet bowl. I was charged with cleaning it. So I mop for like 20 minutes. Ugh. So runny. So I asked my manager what I should do with the mop. Cause it was mostly sh asterisk t by now. She told me to put it in the back. And she would take care of it. I go on my break. I come back from my break. To see the manager mopping the kitchen with the same exact mop. No change in mop head. No change in mop bucket. This is where all baking is done. This is where all food prep is done. And this is where all employees pass through to do everything. Now with a healthy coat of someone's diarrhea. I used to work for a sunglass hut. For starters. All of our sunglasses are made by the same parent company. So the only difference between a pair of $50 Arnett's and $300 Prada lenses is the name. Furthermore, our return policy is 90 days, no questions asked, however, you can exchange a pair for up to a year, a return slash exchanged pair is not checked, refurbished, or anything, we just slap a new price tag on it, and sell it as new. 
I work in an all-natural health food to-go place. A lot of our ingredients come from Cisco. Free range. Grass-fed. Locally sourced. Nope. Nope. Ah and nope. Teller at a large bank in the southeast. Our teller system is run on software that's almost three decades old. When we process your transactions, it's on a black manuscript DOS screen. This is the entire company. If the program talks back to an IBM 360 mainframe, you will be okay. Remember, when the world ends and everyone is dead, the 360 will still be running. These machines will order parts automatically if they feel something is off. Seriously, one day you could get a package from IBM with the new hard drive as the mainframe thought one of the drives was wonky. I work for a major TV network. The amount of catering thrown at us in meetings could feed a small country. It's beyond wasteful and makes me cringe every time. In almost any field, the amount of food thrown out after meetings is shocking. Sometimes I want to pile it all up and send it to poor countries in a big box, but it would have gone bad by the time it arrives. I work in the banquet department of a high-end hotel and you wouldn't believe how much gets thrown out. I'm working with the hour department to get it donated to local shelters since we are so close to DC. Libraries will throw out books. Yep, that's right. Books go in the trash. Oh, they might get recycled, but that costs money. Money a lot of libraries don't have, so often the books get tossed in a dumpster. Hooray weeding. I'm the weirdo who's a giant proponent of weeding. The thing people who talk about donating slash giving them away don't realize is that a lot of the books are pretty much impossible to even give away. Think of old Windows 3.1 manuals. Pretty much everywhere I've worked has had some sort of giveaway slash selling process. So for something to get trashed, nobody would want it. I work at a college and the amount of money spent on salary and benefits for upper level administrators is incredible, especially considering that many of their job duties overlap. Looks like I'm a little late on this thread, but oh well, I've been a consumer product manager for 15 plus years developing and importing good from Asia, everything from coffee makers to BBQ grills. I've been to 100 factories throughout Asia, mostly China, overseeing production and shipment from start to finish. Bottom line, I don't care what kind of job you have here in the US, you do not want to work in a Chinese factory, ever. Programmer here, we are in the pre-industrial era of software development, and even the best of us aren't very good at it. Nobody knows how to write perfect, bug-free code point nobody, not IBM, not Microsoft, not Google not even Linus point nobody, when something has to work correctly, like a fly-by-wire system for an airplane, they use multiply redundant computers, running code written by different teams, both sets of code will have bugs, but it's super unlikely they will have the same bug, in the same place, at the same time. Do not valet your vehicle, I was a valet for a summer in college. We never stole anything, I didn't, at least, and never heard of anyone else doing it either, but the boss was super shady, we were paid in cash in envelopes every two weeks, and I don't think any of it was actually recorded by taxes or any other entity. We also drove pretty carefully, because any damage to a car would be directly charged to us instead of the company, like thousands of dollars deducted from, or charged to what was basically a group of 16 to 24 year olds working part time. Don't know how they got away with that. There was one incident where a new Cadillac was scratched up a little bit from a basic fender bender with a roller mercury. It was a very small scratch slash paint transfer, but definitely noticeable on the caddy. The mercury was already a little beat up. The manager on the site, it was a company that had a lot of different restaurants and bar contracts took pictures of it, and sent them to, and called the main boss. The boss just instructed us to wipe off any paint on the caddy, and not worry about the mercury, and we would only have to deal with it as the car owner noticed it later, and connected it to us. He never did. I thought that was a kind of warped way, to react to it. TL. Dr. Valet. Not bad but not really good. I used to work in social media and most people don't seem to understand that the CEO of the major corporation you are tweeting at is not reading your tweets or Facebook posts. It's actually a 20 something with basically no real power other than generic form responses that we grab off of a book created by corporate. Oh you don't like the dress code policy turns to page 27 paragraph 2 for response. 
copies and pastes, we have the ability to forward your posts to someone higher up to see if they can give you your money back, but we won't if you are a jackass to us, or post something incredibly dumb. Once, I had a customer repeatedly facebook us in increasingly threatening tones, because there was a price increase of zero dollars, and one cent which wasn't even our fault, but because of a tax increase in the state. Also, you should know, that we are making fun of you. So much fun of you. Selection bias. Most people know full well, that the CEOs and other important people don't do Twitter or whatever. However, your job is to deal with the 1% of people who are too stupid to realize that. Yeah you are definitely right. Also, you should know, that we are making fun of you. So much fun of you. Also true at the call center. Web developer. Here, the two main things I can think of are. 1. The price to build a good, custom website. I've heard people balk at prices, that I considered to be low. Yes, you can build a website for little to no money, but they are often not very good compared to a custom built site. 2. Credit card security. While big sites like Amazon are, probably, pretty trustworthy, many sites are much less careful. Just because a site has an SSL, the padlock doesn't mean it handles your information securely. I worked on a site one time where the guy who built it was storing full credit card information in clear text in a database. In fact, everything was being stored in clear text in the same database. Email addresses, passwords, CC info, billing address, all of it. I'm sure his users had no idea, just because it's illegal doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Also, Sites that ask for the CVV slash CSC slash CVD slash ETC number may not even use it. We only have to match a couple of pieces of information, and card number, and billing address are the ones I've seen used most often. One company I worked for didn't even bother submitting the CVV number to the processing company. I'm a resident assistant at an American university. We have to log contacts with our residents every few weeks meaning enter any information about them, we get from them in an online system. The system uses some sort of algorithm, to figure out which students are likely to stay at the university and which aren't, and we have to further stalk the people who are asked to leave. We are basically stalking all our residents all the time. TL, doctor, ran at a university, have to systematically stalk all our residents, and put info about them into a database. I used to work for a few tech companies, all I can say, is that if there was ever a drug test, one half to three quarters of every one would be gone, all of the devs would be gone as well, sales folk, oh yeah they too would be gone, coke is alive, and well in sales. I use a sledger hammer on your car, when you bring it in for repair, and I mean like, all the time, it's received prime real estate on the top of my toolbox as I use it as much as any other tool. The average car owner would be in fact shocked at just how often auto techs, in the rust belt at least, use a hammer on their car, all the time. Which won't come off, unless you really pound on it, and when the hammer doesn't work, or who am I kidding, the hammer always works, eventually. Sound engineer here, no band is half as good as you think they are, including live performances. A good sound guy is worth his weight in gold. Truly the unsung heroes of good live shows. Henry Rollins lists his sound man from Rollins band as a member of the band. In an interview I saw, he said, We only sound, like we do, because we have our sound man. Without him, we are a different band. On the other hand, a bad sound guy can ruin a show. And this happens a lot more often. The lead singer, for instance, Ingrid Michaelson slash Brett Denon, has a quirky, interesting singing voice. Let's ramp up the drums to the point where no one can hear the vocals, just in case all those people sitting down in the auditorium want to get up and dance the night away. I'm a musician and this is ridiculously true. Also, people don't realize how common lip syncing, at least to a certain degree is. It's such a slippery slope for musicians. At first you're like, hey I really want to use some synth samples and percussion on this song. Let's rig that up. Personally I stop at that line. But I've seen, so many bands continue on with schlike. Well now that we've got the samples we're already using a click, might as well throw on that extra guitar track we've always wanted here. Then you start doubling up guitar tracks, to make your live performance sound more like the record. Then suddenly there's actually very little of your actual love guitar left, and from there it's not that big of a logical jump. 
to start throwing in a whole bunch of vocal sh and then you've really got to start hiding it, because if people notice they'll freak out about it. Next thing you know a band is standing up there on stage literally pantomiming the whole goddamned set. One of my favorite memories from my days as a touring musician was standing in the booth with the sound guy, watching one of our tour mates play. They had been rudish and just generally pussy with us all tour and we were not getting along at all. They had also been pretty dickish toward the sound guy that day, so him and I were talking for a bit before their set. Just generally be eyeing about what a-holes they were. Then about halfway through the performance he looks over at me with this smug look on his face. Points at the channel strip labeled LD Vox. Points up on stage to the guy singing. Then hits the mute button on the channel. Vocals keep going along perfectly. Not a single person seems to notice the fact that it's entirely fake. We laughed our ass off about it for the rest of the night. Also a sound engineer to all bands directors and help for audience members the adjustments i make to the board when you give me a suggestion are all fake except monitor adjustments point please tell me what you need i can't hear it and it's my job to help you hear what you need i'm good at my job and i know it it's why i'm at fault and you are not had a vocalist tell me to adjust the mid-range once didn't touch anything and he said yeah that's better thanks drill sergeant i hate family members more than privates Mom, why did you yell at my son Bobby? He is a good boy and doesn't deserve to be yelled at by anyone. Serg, ma'am. He shot Terry in the foot with a loaded gun. Mom, well, Bobby would never be that stupid. Serg, ma'am. He also run through a minefield and got someone killed. Mom, I want to talk to your boss. Very similar conversations occurred. As somebody who's been in the military, I never felt my training instructor, Yusuf term for a drill sergeant, hated me or anybody else. They use hostility as a way of stressing out the trainees. And they really do care about us learning how to behave in a military system. They just don't express their feelings very well. Thank you for making us feel like sh**. For it made us better. I only hate the privates who show up and quit. So much effing paperwork is included, and takes away from valuable training time. You have 3 DS's per platoon if you're lucky, and when some f wad shows up, and quits it is an unbelievably time consuming process. They're the idiots who should have never showed up, and their families probably push them heavily into doing it. Every time I hear, I feel my son would really straighten up, if he joined the army. Get some discipline in him, I fine cringe. F you, discipline your kid yourself. I teach them how to kill the enemy, and be a functioning member of the army, not society, that was your job. I worked and was trained for a very widespread retail clothing franchise that buys, and Rezel's name brand clothing a few things. Rule hash 1, you're going to be ripped off. If you bring in a brand new shirt from American Eagle, you're not going to get anything near retail value and the person taking in your items will probably mark it as last season so you get paid even less. Rule hash 2, that you donate, is probably going to be resolved for complete profit, or taken home by whichever employee spots it first. Rule hash 3, just have a refined yard sale at your rich grandmother's house, you'll get way more than, if you take it to a consignment store. The amount of money spent by school districts on, meetings in vacation areas. The number of people who are harmed by medical errors is insane, absolutely insane, in the US. It's the third leading cause of death. And that's just death. Include the number of people who are seriously harmed and I don't even want to think about it. Yes, and it's always very sad. One of my childhood friends was about to get married and celebrate their daughter's first birthday. Fiance was diabetic and had an attack. Was taken to the hospital. At some point during her stay, an intern gave her the wrong type of insulin, resulting in permanent brain damage and a coma. This poor kid is now 25, and trying to raise his daughter on his own, while the fiancé wastes away in a hospital bed. Seriously if you're in a hospital room with a family member and somebody starts giving them something ask them what it is, and what it does. If they're giving blood thinners to a trauma patient they might be in the wrong room. This, I work in a pharmacy, and I can't even count how many times we have had to call a doctor, because the prescription they wrote for could seriously hurt, or kill their patient. Not too long ago I had a prescription for some strong painkillers. I went to the pharmacy and there was me, and a little old lady waiting. We got our pills in bags. I got home, 
and realized I'd been given some blood pressure medication. I got worried thinking she'd been given my pills and goodness knows what they'd do to her. So I rang the pharmacy. All they said was okay. And what do you want? A refund. Retail. Simple but I recently saw our total shrink for the year. Losses. Theft. And while it was over $100,000 in retail value, it was actually only about $5,000 worth of merchandise to the company. Pretty high-end clothing slash accessories. But shirts literally cost from $1 to $6 to make. 60. $100 sign retail. The gap for accessories is not nearly as ridiculous. But those clothes. Damn. By the way, the company was accused of sweatshops like 20 years ago. But they changed all of that back then. I can only imagine their margins back in the day. By the way, the company was accused of sweatshops like 20 years ago. But they changed all of that back then. I can only imagine their margins back in the day. Don't kid yourself, man. They are still using sweet shops. They just moved them to an area where the natives can't tell the press. I used to work as a cashier slash delivery driver at a sushi restaurant and a lot of people didn't realize that the base of most of our rolls is a California roll. I remember this one time a guy came in with his girlfriend and they ordered a volcano roll, which was a California roll, cut to form triangle, and topped with spicy mayo, and broiled fish. I brought it out to them, and as I was walking away I heard him call me back. Apparently he didn't realize that it came with the sauce on top, because we put it in a container for delivery slash pickup. He asked if he could get another one without the sauce, because they both didn't like it. A California roll was $3.75 and our volcano roll was $7.25. So he was basically paying $3.50 more for it to be a certain shape. I work in a pharmacy and people seem to think that all we do is count out some pills and slap a label on it. Some customers seem to think that because McDonald's gives you a burger in 5 minutes. This is how long it should take to dispense life-saving medication. There is a lot more to it than you might think. We have to check for drug interactions, deal with mistakes written on prescriptions, fight with your insurance, etc. I have seen on many occasions where a worker will go out of their way to help someone by doing a lot of behind-the-scenes work and get yelled at because it took too long. The funner thing is, if your doctor almost kills you, we don't even tell you. We call the doctor and correct the prescription, and send you on your way. When I was younger, and worked in a grocery store, we indeed did have a lot of stuff in the back, and often if you didn't ask nicely, she would stop existing there. Lesson, be nice, and things that you need, or want, might actually come out of the mysterious back storage. I worked retail, and looking in the back was always my excuse for taking a 5 minute break in the empty section of the stockroom, where that item was supposed to be. As long as nobody caught me texting, I was a okay. Also, I found it incredible that I went from having to answer questions from people who were condescending to having people apologize for interrupting me the moment I started carrying a clipboard around while I pretended to be working. I'm raging alcoholic come off as homeless sometimes, and am really into kinky dirty six. This is the majority of me, and my cowhawkers are the life of an ESL teacher. I was under the impression that most teachers were alcoholics, and that this wasn't limited to ESL teachers. Your impression is correct. We love the sauce, and know how to party. Everything chicken at Chick-fil-A is not prepackaged, and in fact hand filleted, and breaded in the store. Lots of crazy in this thread thought I would throw in a positive. KFC does this as well. Raw chicken comes in, angry satisfied customers go out. As a sonic worker I know we make our runyon rings from scratch. I work at a warm at Tyloo Band Express, auto shop, and the amount of helping out a customer is beyond known. I know it sounds crazy, because people believe Walmart is a crap hole, but honest people work there. Many of my co-workers try to help customers save money, by telling them they only need two tires instead of four or a less expensive oil change, because their car doesn't need inspection points, if they don't have certain parts, i.e. transfer case or rear differential, working in the back. A lot of customers don't see what goes on and only see the price. We also have to have a greater knowledge beyond what we can do to really help customers with their cars. We don't do major services like brakes, but we still have knowledge of it. We even sometimes recommend local family owned auto shops, if we can't do it. I work in the oil field, 
Half the people would be shocked to find out about the misconceptions they hear in the media, and by radical environmentalists are false. The other half would be shocked by the bad things that happen out here, that the media and radical environmentalists don't ever talk about. You tease. What is the other half of the bad things? When I worked in retail, I would say that the everyday customer would be shocked to learn that I hated them by default, not because they are making me work, no, that's called having a job, but because it is so common these days for people to treat retail workers like sh for some reason. It seems like it has actually become socially acceptable to yell at people working in the service industry just to get your way, even when you are clearly in the wrong. Just take a trip to slash r slash talus from retail for a taste.